right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Janie L. Smith, who is in Tampa, if I'm correct. No, sorry, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And how are you today, Janie? I'm doing great, thank you. And you? Very good. And Janie is the author of a number of books, but the one that we're going to talk about today is Creating Competitive Advantage. So let's get straight into it. Uh, Janie, do you think most businesses know what their competitive advantage really is? No. In fact, I will tell you that 95% don't know what it is. Wow. And I've actually tested it, and it's not my opinion. I, ha I can back that statement up with research. Wow. So wh why is it then that 95% don't know what the competitive advantage is? Because you th think that that's one of the first things that you would figure out when you go to market, right? Well, let, let me define it a little mm -hmm. different than, than uh, your listeners may know. Competitive advantage, the way we look at it, is the value proposition you bring to your customers that's relevant. Many companies think they have competitive advantages, and we've tested them. And the reason that um, my book is so interesting to business owners is because it's based on research. We have conducted almost 300 double blind market research studies for companies of all sizes and all industries. And before we reveal the findings to the companies, we say to them, what do you think are the top three buying criteria for your customers and your prospects? We always ask them to give it their best guess before we reveal the actual findings. 95% get it wrong. So what that yeah. says is 95% don't know what their customer's top buying criteria is, and worse yet, 85% don't measure what their customers care about. Without knowing or measuring it, you can't have a competitive advantage. You're telling them things like, we're a family business. We've been mm -hmm. around for 20 years. We've proved through research nobody cares. Right. <laughs> it's not the things to talk about. Uh, so then, so then, I mean, most most people would, uh, and I see with with your book, you have the the first the, the kind of fundamental keystone question, which is, you know, why should I do business with you and not your competitor? And and what you've just said is that a lot of times we either. We think we know why you should do business with us, but what you're saying is we may oftentimes tell them reasons that they frankly don't care about. So how do I get how do I get from there to actually talking about things that the customer cares about? Yeah, so they don't what, what most companies do, they they talk about things that they want the customer to care about mm -hmm. because we're good at it. So we may be good at product knowledge, but you know, we bring back the research and we find out companies' product knowledge ranks number 17 out of 20 tested attributes. It's not high. So we are big believers in double blind market research. And the reason for double blind is you remove the bias. Mm -hmm. They don't know it's your company asking. You're saying when you buy XYZ product or service, what is most important to you? And we test attributes. And so two things come out of that every time we do it. Number one is price is never as important as companies think it is. Um, but they paint themselves into commodity corner because they're talking to the customer about things they don't care about. So we believe customer research, there are various forms of it. Um, but we're big believers in the double blind research. Mm -hmm. And I like it here. You say it, there's five fatal flaws most companies uh you know, fall into. Um, what, what can you just take us through those? Um, well, uh, they don't know what their customers value. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't communicate it. They don't measure it, um, and they don't know um, what the most relevant buying criteria is. So I, I know on my jack, my book jacket, I have those mm -hmm. flaws. It's mm -hmm. been a while since I've looked at them. Sure. But, there are so many ways in which there's this disconnect between the customer. You know, we call it, there's a chapter in that book called Dangerous Disparity. The dangerous disparity is that which you're telling people the, the answer to why us, why should I buy from you? Because we have good customer service, good, good people who are knowledgeable, consistent, responsive. We call that blah, blah, blah. <laughs> competitor of yours says that or can say that it does not differentiate so we believe that your statements must be you know I do a lot of keynote speaking and I just mm -hmm. I just did 
for Delta Airlines uh, salespeople, for example. And you can't be, we're in a world of disruption. Yeah. You have to disrupt the marketing talk, the sales talk. We cannot talk the way we used to. We have to have clearly defined, quantified, very brief statements that answer why us. Mm -hmm. Look, place, all of us have ADD. Right? We're not going to sit through these long-winded marketing speak talks. We got to get the answer to why us in about three solid bullet points. Yeah, no, I love it, and I think obviously I think there's. I, I don't think you're going to run out of work with the airline industry. That's for sure, because um, I think the disconnect between what the consumer would like or the customer would like and values and what they value. I think, uh, as I said, I, th I think you've got some work there. Um, uh, what I like also, just picking up on one of these is, and I think this is probably something that uh, we all fall into, as you say, is mistaking strengths for competitive advantages, right? Because I think most that's probably a starting point for most companies. They, As you said, they'd say, here, we're good at this, this, and this. Those are our strengths. Therefore, that's our competitive advantage. Um, and obviously, that's not the right way to approach it at all. So, um, so what, are some of the, what are some of the ways, if you take a step back and you look at your own maybe how you're presenting yourself today and, and take a different approach. Oh, sure. So um, with some of the um, things that people will typically say, for example, we have good quality, good mm -hmm. customer service. Mm -hmm. So I say, how do you define quality? Well, it's good. What, that's not good enough. What's your return rate? We don't know. Well, go look mm -hmm. at your return rate. We've had clients who do this. They send us eight years of raw data. We mine the data to find out they had less than one half of 1% return rate. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wouldn't the salespeople love to have that in their hands? Right. So we most companies are sitting on either landmines or gold mines of data. That company was sitting on a gold mine of data. We had another company, Quality was number one. We said, what's your return rate? They didn't know. We said, measure for the next two months and call us back. They had 68 orders and 54 complaints, and oh they had goodness. no clue. So they were sitting on a landmine. So it's mm -hmm. critical that you have this information, and very few companies do this. And that's fascinating, right? So in both cases, right? Um, but maybe in the second case, so you're saying, we've got great customer service and yet you've got this huge return rate so not only are you are you saying something that's patently not true but you're also setting yourself up aren't you for people right. out out there to point out say oh great customer service are you kidding me i had to return to them so it's like it's like the worst of all worlds right it is, and that very company, by the way, mm -hmm. um, we said to them, since you've had so many complaints, send us the emails. We'd like to see what kinds of complaints they are. We mined their emails. They were things like the customer saying, this part was missing, and the, their customer service, I'll get it for you, I'll get back to you, I'll get back to you, I'll get back to you. Right. Two weeks go by, and the customer's not hearing anything. So this company not only didn't know how bad the, the product was, but they didn't know their customer service was mishandling the customer. So it can really be a nightmare. Um, you know, strengths, you know, good customer service, good quality, good people, knowledgeable, those are givens. I'm yeah. not inviting you to the final beauty contest if you don't have the givens. It's what are you going to do better? Yeah, I always find that kind of fascinating when people say things like that, saying, well, we have, we have good customer service. And you always think, well, well, as you say, well, I would expect you to, so why are you even drawing attention to that? That would make me believe that perhaps you don't, <laughs> the fact that you even drew attention to it. Um, but as you say, I mean, there's a lot of things that are just things that a customer expects. That's like getting you to zero, right? It's like when you walk into a store and you buy something, you expect to, you know, you pay for it, then you expect it to work or to do whatever it's supposed to do. I mean, there's you're not winning any awards for for the for the product doing what it says on the package, right? Right. You're at parity with everybody else, pretty much. And so it's what above and beyond. Um, that's why we're so big on your ability to quantify what you do. So your statements need to be objective, not subjective. You tell me you have good customer service. Your definition of good customer service in mine may be light years apart, so it has no meaning. Yeah, because because mine might be because I might say, well, we great customer service. We we return every email within twenty four hours, and you might say, well, that's horrible. You should be a lot quicker. Or the return email in twenty four hours may be, thank you for emailing us. We'll get back to you as soon as we have the answer. Um, okay, so uh, can you give me some examples, not the company names, but just some examples um, where you have helped companies and some of the things that they have done to really differentiate and quantify what they do well. 
Okay. So there's this one company up in Boston. It's a, an SBA lender, Small Business Administration. Right. And when we got in there, they had pretty much the blah, blah, blah language. And their salespeople thought that taking people, the, the loan officers of the banks out to dinner was enough of a competitive advantage. <laughs> so we went through the process and we found out that what they wanted was uh, the loans approved quickly, a response mm -hmm. to issues when they arose, and uh, communication. Well, the CEO, once he got the results back from the research, which we did, um, created a concierge desk so that they held everybody accountable for those three things, measured them, made sure the salespeople were saying it and using it, and then uh, <laughs> he went from number 14 in his space to number two in his space, wow. and I just talked to him the other day, he says he's number one in Boston now as a lender. Wow. He, his concierge desk was an operational change he made to make sure that they stayed on top of the three most important things valued by the customer. And I bet you those loan officers don't care that they don't get the free meals anymore because no. they're getting what they value, right? They're getting, they're getting to push more loans out the door, which is really how they make their money. Right. And so when you first started with them, so they probably would have said, well, one of our advantages is that we build these great relationships, right? Because we go exactly. out and we bring them to dinner and everything. That is the phrase I love to hate. <laughs> we, have a, we have a client who just spent a lot of money with a branding company who said, oh, you know, you're going to brand it because you build relationships. I, I just wanted to, oh, I don't even want to tell you. When I saw that, well, we tested it in their research and relationships came in number nine out of 20 tested attributes. Those are givens. And the other thing I say to people who want to tout their wonderful ability to build relationships, so can the competition. Mm -hmm. That's differentiate you know I like that guy as much as I like you what are you gonna do for me on time order accuracy you know we had one client in the UK uh, the number one thing was order accuracy and the right. CEO very proudly said oh that's great we measure order accuracy and his VP of marketing says boss we haven't measured that in four years <laughs> so the other kinds of things we often find can you give me another few examples because these are really I think these are really fascinating because these concrete examples I love it yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. So we have a, a company that transports flowers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, 747 flowers comes into Miami airport. They get dumped into his refrigerated warehouse. They get boxed up. They get put on his refrigerated trucks, and they get transported to wholesalers all over North America. Same operation out on the West Coast. Um, so we do this process with him, and he learns that it's on-time delivery. He learns that it's uh, temperature control, it's flowers, mm -hmm. and damage control, delicate transport, it's flowers. And we were able to find out through working with their metrics, they had something like, I, I don't recall exactly, I'm making up this sure. somewhat, 98% on-time delivery. We had, um, out of 2,500 boxes, we had less than 0.1% damage rate and we had less than one degree variance in the temperature control in our trucks. So that was critical. They weren't saying that before. They knew those things were important. Once we had them say that, we said, now you go out there and raise your prices because this was a very competitive industry. Mm -hmm. They were to do that. We pushed them to raise their prices. They lost one customer out of 250. They had a clearly defined value proposition, exactly what the customer wanted. They had the metrics to back it up and it was solid. So if they increased their prices, only lost one customer, uh, chances are then their overall revenue went up, right? Oh yes, oh yes. They were able to um, get more clients because they were now touting the things that were most important. They had this solid research proving that these are the, you know what I tell com companies, a lot of companies will say to us, oh we measure everything. Yeah, you measure key indicators that are internally focused. Not enough companies are focusing what's externally matters. We call them customer relevant indicators. What does a customer care about? Are you measuring things that they look at? The on-time delivery, the order accuracy. You'd be surprised when I talk to big groups or CEO roundtables, I say, how many of you measure on-time delivery? Half the room raises their hand. How many of you that have your hands up use it in sales and marketing? Oh, two of them. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you're, they're leaving money on the table for just one of some of these critical metrics. And and yeah, no, and I, and I think this is a great piece of advice that you're giving here is real. So as customers really want to see something that's quantifiable and identifiable, right? So, okay, so if on-time delivery is important to me, I want to know how often you deliver on time or if uh, it arriving in good condition is important to me. I want to know how often that happens, right? Um, yes. May I give you an example yeah. of the on-time delivery? 
um, this is a really important one because one of the things we say, you can't just go out there and say we have 98% on-time delivery. It has to be provable. Mm -hmm. So we have a client who went in after he saw on-time delivery was number one because he's a manufacturer and distributor um, in the RV industry. He went into this big client prospective client customer and said we have 98% on time delivery and here's 10 years of our track record he was able with the three ring binder to show for 10 years we've been good and uh, here's how we do it we have uh, 24 million dollars 70 forward days of inventory 10 years a day to proving it wow. he landed a 1 million dollar contract that day because he was able to prove their metrics and that it was institutionalized in their company not just a number they were throwing out very, very critical. Yeah, that's a that's an excellent point. Uh, I did some work a number of years ago with a, a transport transportation company, and they had, when you walked into their building, they had a picture, a huge, massive picture, uh, in the reception area of their truck driver who had gone something insane like 20 years without any incident, late package, any, anything at all, and they had this huge one up there. So the minute you walked in, you went, wow, um, if, I was, if I needed to transport something, you know, I'd probably trust them. We, we had a oil and oil and gas trucking company and they and safety was clearly number one they said yeah it's one for all of us we said yeah your website and all your competitors websites say right. first in safety so who really is so we had them send us all their data all their safety data and they had like 10 bullet points way beyond anybody in the industry including one like that without incident mm -hmm. um, you know their EMR was 40% better than the industry average great stuff that they weren't saying and we said you got to change this so it, it, it inspired me to write a blog, which is don't take for granted that which is taken for granted. If safety is a given in your industry and you can prove you're better, by all means, go out there and prove it. Yeah, I, I love that. So let's have that one again. Don't take for granted um, what is taken for granted. <laughs> yes, don't take for granted. <laughs> I would just take it for granted. Excellent. Uh, that's uh, that's a really good one because I do think you're right. I think I think there's probably a lot of industries and companies if they looked at some of those things they'd say, well, yeah, of course we do that and we're we're good at that, but you know, nobody cares really. Yeah. But so the fact is, they do. When we go into a company, we have this thing we do with the first day on site with their team. We uh, do a drill down and we never leave a company without 50 first drafts of potential competitive advantages, wow. most of which the company didn't know they had. It's incredible how many wow. things we've taken for granted. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, well, listen, we're bumping up against the end of the time, but before we go, I wanted to give you a chance to tell the viewers and listeners a little bit more about you and what you do and how they can find out more about you. Yeah, so our website is Smart Advantage, S M A R T, smartadvantage.com. Um, first chapter of both books is free on the website. We have great results for our clients. That's also on the website. It tells you what these companies who have embraced this have done. Um, and of course, both books, Creating Competitive Advantage, the one we're talking about today. And the next book is Relevant Selling. Um, great, I call them one airplane rides reads, one airplane ride reads, they're not too long, but boy, they're loaded with actual case studies and results. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. Um, so thanks, Janie. I mean, I, I took some notes here today, learned some stuff myself. Uh, so this has been fantastic. Uh, again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.